The Galaxy S22 Ultra looks and feels like a Galaxy Note phone, but it has also borrowed the incredible camera from the S series. So how does this new powerful flagship compare against the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the Google Pixel 6 Pro, two of the best camera phones out there? Hello guys, my name is Vic with Phone Arena and I was eager to find out and we have already captured hundreds of photos with these three phones and quite a few videos. But before we jump into that, a quick look at the camera specs that we're dealing with. So we've got four cameras on the back of the S22 Ultra and yes, these are identical to last year's S21 Ultra, which already gives this new Galaxy an advantage over the iPhone and the Pixel simply because these two phones don't have that fourth long range zoom lens. The other three cameras are similar across all three phones. You have a main camera, an ultra wide, and a zoom lens. So the main camera on the Ultra remains the familiar 108 megapixel sensor we had in the last two years with Ultra phones. And this sensor is about the same size as the one on the Pixel and both of them are bigger than the main sensor on the iPhone. All phones also come with 12 megapixel ultra wide cameras and finally you have a 3 times zoom on the iPhone and the Galaxy and 4 times zoom on the Pixel. Okay, that was a mouthful but enough with the technicalities, let's jump into some real footage. So this is a front camera video recording with the Galaxy S22 Ultra in the bright light here and we're recording in 4K30 on all three phones here. Looks pretty good in the viewfinder and the screen gets plenty bright which is great for a recording video during the day. So video looks good on all three but what about the selfie photos? So of course you have a close-up view or a wider view to pick from for selfies on all three but the pixel can get a bit wider than the rest and that's great for those group shots. Just look at how much more space you have. The iPhone definitely has a bit of a problem with colors here as skin tones have this very weird pumpkin-like orange tonality. We don't like this at all. But also check out this portrait mode selfies. All three phones can do portrait mode with the selfies and a closer look at my hair actually shows that the Pixel seems to be doing the best job here. Of course, we also have a couple of nighttime selfies. The Galaxy actually uses the screen as a fill light, which is very appropriate here. Overall, we'd say that the Galaxy and the Pixel are tied when it comes to selfies. It's really close, but both are way more consistent and almost always have great colors and lots of clean detail. But enough with the selfies, let's get to the main course and these are photos we shot during the day on all three phones. So take a look at a few of these and try to guess which one they came from. And yes, one easy way to tell this is simply the Galaxy has a wider lens than the rest, so it has the wider picture. But it's not just that. A few samples more and it's clear that Samsung now goes for this super bright look on almost all photos. And I'm not sure I like that. Just look at these brighter spots in the images. They look almost burned out on the Galaxy and images are just often overexposed while the other two phones appear way more balanced. And take a closer look at details like the three branches on this shot. They're over sharpened to the point they get a little halo around them which just doesn't look good. Not only that but with this new even wider lens that Samsung uses detail around the edges of photos often appears smudged and mushy while it's way cleaner on the other two phones. Now you might not notice this on your phone screen but look at the pictures on a laptop or just simply zoom in and it is noticeable. Now all of that doesn't seem right and calls for an urgent update from Samsung but as it is currently we're actually a bit disappointed with the Ultra during the day and it often feels like a step back from even last year's S21 Ultra to be honest. But let's try out the portrait mode. Samsung promised incredible things here, being able to recognize even individual strains of hair. Now I don't have curly hair and we're yet to test this with pets, it also works with pets, but the quality really seems to be great on the shots that we captured. The camera also filters out flare nicely in zoom portraits, subjects are well separated from the background, Colors are rich and finally this one feature feels like a win of the Galaxy over the iPhone. And as for the Pixel, well, I don't recommend using the portrait mode on it at all if possible. It actually uses digital crop for portrait mode and detail looks terrible. But 
what you could do instead is just take a regular picture using the four times zoom camera that you have on board. It doesn't blur the background completely, but at least it has excellent detail and you probably like it more. Now, one thing you can do to get a better image from the Galaxy during the day is switch to its full 108 megapixel resolution. Samsung says this time it doesn't just shoot one high res photo, but it actually uses something it calls adaptive pixel, combining the full res shot with a pixel bend image to give you a superior end result. And we can definitely say that you definitely get a lot more detail in this mode. Just take a look at these crops. One is from the regular 12 megapixel photo and the other one is from the same scene just with the high res mode turned on. It's a night and day difference, isn't it? By the way, you also have this new detail enhancer option button here that will try to recognize objects and give you better colors, or at least Samsung says so, but it's a bit hit or miss and sometimes it works well, but for example on this photo it completely ruined the shot. Also, don't forget that those high res photos take up a lot of space, 20 to 30 megabytes for just one image. They do look better, but use them when you really need them. And next, if you compare the ultra wide cameras, you see basically the same thing on the ultra as with the main camera. Slightly overexposed photos with very aggressive sharpening. And again, highlights are often burned out on the Galaxy, so this is not quite the camera improvement we're hoping for. By the way, what do you think about this new camera styling with each camera lens protruding on the Galaxy? We have mixed feelings. It kind of looks nice, but it does catch dust like crazy between those rings. All right, we've been a bit disappointed with the Galaxy so far, but one thing where the Ultra absolutely kills it is the zoom quality. Going to 10 times zoom really shows the big advantage the Galaxy has over the competition. The camera also stays less shaky and jittery and it's just easier to shoot with it while zooming. Detail is great and you can get truly artsy shots with it, like this cup of coffee that just looks incredible at 10 times zoom. And the Pixel is also not bad at 10 times zoom, but just not on the same level. And the iPhone? Well, it should not even be in this zoom conversation at all, it's just not that good. So what about video recording in low light? So all phones suffer in such conditions, but the Galaxy uses a new clear lens design that minimizes lens flare and you can notice this if you point the phone against the light at night, it looks improved. And we also quickly tried using the new super steady mode that Samsung advertised at night as it actually uses the ultra wide camera and records only at 1080p resolution. So everything appears way too dark. So we just recommend sticking with the main camera for low light videos. And if you want to use super steady, just use it during the day. As for the night photographs that we took with the Galaxy, they did look better than before and they go neck to neck with the Pixel, which we still think has the best nighttime photo quality. The iPhone is a bit behind. Its interface is easier to use, but night photos often appear a bit too dark and sometimes the white balance is a bit off. So it's time to draw the proverbial line in the sand. The Galaxy S22 Ultra is still clearly a very, very good camera, but with a few interesting quirks and it actually disappointed us this time around and we really hope Samsung can push a software update that fixes the slight overexposure and sharpening issues before it launches the phone. Now it's still an absolute zoom beast of course and those 108 megapixel snaps, they look incredible. But yeah, we did expect a bit more and we hope Samsung delivers in an update. So that's it for now. Let us know which photos you liked best. Is it the iPhone, is it the Galaxy or the Pixel? Which one is your favorite? Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel here, Phone Arena. We have more S22 coverage on the way, including a battery test. But this will do it for now. Thanks for watching. My name is Vic and I'll catch you guys in the next one.